Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and it's Windows 10 time. I've been playing with the preview build, but Microsoft is done kicking the tires, and now we're going to take a look at what's new. I also want to send a shout out to my pals at Lenovo for hooking me up with a ThinkPad Helix to show off this new operating system. Microsoft's strategy for Windows 10 seems to be focused on running some damage control. <laughs> I was a big fan of Windows 8, but I don't think anyone would disagree that it was a substantial UI change, which was horrifically poorly communicated with Microsoft customers. Windows 10 appeals to my sense of mashup culture culture in walking us back to a more familiar layout for fans of Windows 7 while retaining a lot of what I liked about Windows 8 and providing a more flexible layout depending on what device you own. To that end, multi-mode devices like the Surface and this Helix are kind of perfect for showing off these changes. Windows 8 brought fantastic tools for people who owned touch screens, but mouse and keyboard folks felt left out, and organizing the UI for touch wasn't very efficient for trackpads and mouse pointers. Of course, much noise has been made about the return of the start menu. A collection of tiles sits next to commonly accessed settings and your most commonly used apps. Windows 8 trained me to just type what program I was searching for, but if you really want to look for things, we've got a list of services organized similarly to what we see on Windows Phone. The desktop layout is pretty traditional. Programs can be pinned to the taskbar and you'll still see active apps there. Cortana lives here docked as a search bar and we'll talk about her in just a bit. And system settings like Wi-Fi, touchscreen keyboard, volume, and battery info are staged near the clock. Hitting the notification icon slides out what used to be the charms bar and is now a far more useful notification shade. Alerts and quick toggles, this is UI design we've understood working back to the Palm Pre, and it's a welcome addition to a desktop operating system. Multi-mode computing really shines with an easily accessed tablet mode. On the Helix, detaching the keyboard will activate a prompt asking you if you'd like to switch the UI, or you can get there from the notification panel. There's just a ton more conveyance around this user interface than there ever was with Windows 8. Instead of hoping you'll figure out gestures, we have a hamburger menu at the top for recently used apps and system settings, a list icon at the bottom to get to all of your apps, and a power button to shut your system down. Live tiles are easily added and organized on this home screen, providing you quick access to commonly used programs and at-a-glance updates. Apps and programs now function the same way in resizable windows, and snapping apps to a side offers up suggestions on what else you can snap to the opposite side. Another nice conveyance touch. It's one of the best benefits of working on a Windows tablet, native split-screening apps, and I've met too many people who didn't know their PC could do that. Happily, Windows 8 gestures still perform similar functions. A slide from the left shows you which apps are currently running, and a slide from the top will pull an app out of full-screen mode. Ah, uh, Cortana makes her official debut. She's a helpful digital assistant who responds well to casually delivered commands. Ask her to set a reminder or tell you a joke, and she'll jump into action. Cortana serves as a hub for collecting your interests while also organizing your day-to-day -day activities. She's a welcome addition from the Windows Phone side of the ecosystem, and she's the main face for most of the searching you'll be doing. Another new addition to the family is the Edge browser. Formerly Project Spartan, I don't think many people will mourn the loss of Internet Explorer. Edge is a worthy replacement, bringing a lean, lightning-quick browsing experience. For the folks who left IE and Firefox for Chrome back in the day, but might be feeling Google's browser has gotten a bit bloated, Edge will certainly be worth a look. Controls are nicely balanced in size for folks using both touchscreen or pointer controls. History and bookmarks are now organized in a hub where you can easily save articles. There's an intense focus on sharing and collaboration. You can write notes on any web page, upload those screenshots to OneDrive, or share them with people directly. There are also new sharing options for apps installed on your computer. Enjoying an article and want to share it directly to Facebook or Reddit? Yep, you can do that with a couple button presses. If a universal app supports that integration, it'll show up in this sharing list similar to how Android might share with installed apps. Plus, a new reading view can help you focus on content by removing distracting web page elements. Edge has been one of the happier surprises upgrading to Windows 10, and I haven't yet run into any serious situations where I'd want to fall back to Chrome or Firefox, though we could certainly use an installable ad blocker. Our settings menu also gets an overhaul. No longer a page full of icons, category view is the law of the land. Consumers have gotten used to layouts like this thanks to the proliferation of mobile devices and tablets, and it is better organized than previous incarnations. Happily, for cranky old fogies like me, you can still get to the old control panel
panel by right-clicking on the Windows icon. Microsoft Store has gotten a much-needed facelift, combining apps, music, and video directly into one storefront. Performance is faster, and it's much easier to find settings, download info, and updates. Like Google Play, in this day and age, it just makes more sense to have a single point of sale for all media and content. And there's a ton of other things we could be covering, like new and updated apps for the calendar, photos, Groove Music, and a mail app which finally doesn't suck. But on the whole, what we have here is a wonderful refresh for the Microsoft ecosystem. For a while now, it felt like we've been divided into camps. Windows 7 for folks on more traditional computers, Windows 8 for people on tablets and hybrids. Windows 10 smashes the two together like it's peanut butter jelly time. No one should really feel left out in the cold now. We'll be covering some more Windows 10 tips and tricks in future videos, and be on the lookout for our long-term review of the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix now that it finally has the Windows 10 update. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel without your support, like fan funding, using my Amazon affiliate links, and sharing my videos on your favorite social sites. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.